What's going on, everybody? Man, I've got to switch that. Uh-oh. Usually it dies off a little bit. Yeah. And this one just ends abruptly, and I'm not ready. And <laughs> But here we are. Yeah, I was pulling up some stuff. Um, So, hey. Hey. It's, uh, it's a round, round, round table. Um, but why is Corey saying my new internet's on the fritz? Mm. We're all live. We're, everything's working, right? I think so. You can hear us all. Yeah. Yeah. I love my new internet. It's so fast. So fast. So fast. Um, oh, because you're late. late. Yeah. No, you're always like 20 minutes early, Corey. Oh. Yeah. You are that early. It was against Amy's philosophy. Mm -hmm. that my family... Um, Motto is uh, don't be a dick. So when we're out in public, um, if when the kids were younger, we would just say "de bad," and that mean don't be a dick. So that's our family rule. And Corey's breaking it. He is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There it's it is. Privileges right there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Wad Zombie. Yeah. That's true. Um. Bud Zombie says, Corey is a dick who comes early. Yeah. 20 minutes early. Yeah. Every time. So, uh, don't say right. D-bag, though. You're right. It's the bad, not D-bag. Right. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow, we're off to a roaring start already. Um, Lots to talk about, though, today. We, we Let's dig in. Let's talk about. It. So the open is done. Mm -hmm. You have finished. I have. I did not compete this year. Mm -hmm. I just got to watch. And I try. I actually downloaded your your consistency list. Okay. Um, and then I moved it over to our drive, and okay. I accidentally deleted it, okay. trying to clear off space on our drive. So, um, so basically, what it showed is that Amy has been right around the 90th percentile since she's done the Open in 2014. Mm -hmm. And so she is 91st percentile this year, meaning even if they didn't change the rules, you'd be going on to quarterfinals. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, I guess that's true. That that would still be happening. And if you, I think if you saw like my first, my worst Open, which was my first, right? So that's to be expected. I was 65, 65th percentile. And then I was 87th uh, the following year. And then uh, 90, 90s and above for, for after that. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, you know, most of my PRs have stayed about, about the same as far as like strength stuff. But um, my technique has gotten way better. Um, and, you know, just maintaining fitness at my age, I'm great with that efficiencies so you don't gas out as early mm -hmm. um you don't spin around the world doing double unders anymore but I, I don't have the same cardio that i used to and that's i mean that's when i was really training a lot of cardiovascular like you know marathon training so um i have you know less of that but i am able to do more you know metcons and things like that at a stable pace so so before we get into the elite athletes, um, what is your overall impression from the three workouts put together as an open this year? Were you happy, meh, or sad? So I loved the last workout. Like I needed that workout um, because I like those skills of gymnastics. And just because I've been doing CrossFit for a long time, I'm able to do um, them after, you know, like a lot of practice and hard work. So I needed that one. I wonder, like I hated the first workout and I wonder if it was really the workout that I hated or it just that it was the first one. And I'm just somewhat of an anxious person when the open comes around that like, 
just the anticipation of it. And then like, I hated it during it. And I think it was more of a mental than it is, was the physical task. And so I would be curious to hit that up, you know, and I don't know, a month or so and just see what it feels like coming at it with, with less nerves overall. And, and just so people know, like I've been around Amy for 10 years now. Um, and she, and it's funny, like her, her, her son, I think this son this year talked you down from an anxious moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but you put so much pressure on yourself during the open. I do. Um, and, and you still perform at a very high level, which is really cool. Yeah. And I do better when I don't think. <laughs> and so that first workout to me, it, it sucks because you know that there's no technique area where you can make it up. It is all grunt, mm -hmm. all grit. Can you push yourself beyond your limits and, uh, and just keep going? Yeah. Cause there's nothing fun about that. There's no, like I accomplished this technique. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think it's something like if people came in off the street, they could do that workout. Yeah. A couple months into CrossFit. I agree. And I, I liked the scaled version of both of those first two workouts. Um, I actually think for this, this last one, I think jumping chest to bar pull-ups are terrible. Like, I think they're really challenging. Um, and I think it's, it, it was, it's very discouraging to a lot of athletes because like a lot of athletes can jump high enough um, on there, but maybe just can't get their chest to it um, because it's not a move that's trained a lot. You know, I don't think, I mean that, and that's gym dependent. I'm not, I'm not throwing that out to, I'm, I'll take responsibility for that, but it, but it is a different movement. Like people who have done that part of the workout, their calves are going to be killing, you know, from all the jumping chest to bar. Well, and here's my beef with the jumping chest to bar. I don't think it helps you get a chest to bar. Uh, yeah. Right. It's, it, it's, it's not something that if you do better at that, you'll learn the technique and yeah. you're pulling for someone who's never like gotten up to the bar like that before you're pulling your face yeah this bar and it's just so you ch almost change your body angle to make it so you can just bang the chest it, from someone who's done it scaled before and done the jumping chest to bar it's awful and it took me it took me a lot of practice just to be able to get them and then to do them i have to do it in like a weird body contortion yeah, like it's, it's like an undulation you know yeah yeah i don't think it helps you at all at getting to a chest of bar yeah personally but but that's it i didn't do it this year so i don't have any room to complain but what i did love is you know my favorite parts of the open are when you see somebody you know get do something that they've never done before and it was great that um i was able to help support a couple of athletes um with getting their first pull-ups with just chin over bar pull-ups and they were just so ecstatic. And, and that's, those are the parts I like the most. Um, and bar muscle-ups are a good exercise for that too. Um, every time they put those in the open, you get a ton of videos of people getting their first bar muscle up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And pushing themselves to that moment. So I like that that was in this year's open. Um, but yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm glad that you did that. Can't wait for quarterfinals. Um, you get a couple extra days this year to get it get it all in. Yeah. So here's my so here's what's an interesting fact. Let's talk about this because maybe I just haven't read the rules to understand. So where my standings are right now, I hit quarterfinals for both age, age group. Correct. So are they going to be? Is it the same workouts? Yep. Okay. Okay. Same, same weekend. Same workouts. Same workouts. This year. Okay. Okay. So you will actually compete in both during that. Okay. Got it. Cause I was just like, uh, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> I want to do this one. Right. Yeah. So you'll, you'll just be entered in both. Okay. Um, I don't know what the mush craze. I know what it is. Some people, uh, Vindicate was talking about why is everybody talking about mush? It's, it's crap ingredients. And I like the taste of mush and it is a nice, price at Costco. So that I'll say. Yeah. They're we don't we're not sponsored by them, so I'm not talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just giving information about what it is. And I appreciate that Pat Vellner shops at Costco because that is a fiscally responsible thing to do. 
Well, speaking of fiscal, um, we get to the top five in the open, win money. We talked about it last week on the Thursday night show. Mm -hmm. 15 grand to the winner, more than if you win a semifinal, which boggles my mind to this mm -hmm. very day. Um, but 15 grand, 10 grand for second. And then some iteration to get down to 5,000, I think, what is it? Seven, six, five? Mm -hmm. I'm like that. Um, so uh, top five win money. And we're going to start with the men. But on the women's side, three of our friends of the show all won money. And we're super excited about that. So on the men's side, um, Yona Koski with the open win. How about that? I mean, talk about Mr. Consistency also. Dude's been in the game for a long time. I know. Uh, we got to see him celebrate after the 2022 games. That's what I'm saying. And he was <laughs> uh, And he was briefly on the podcast for a minute in that state. <laughs> yep. Um, and that was super fun to experience. Uh, but what blew me away is his performance on 24.2. Um, the rowing workout, he's not your big, tall athlete. And to be able to compete at that level, um, super awesome. Our buddy Saxon Pancheck takes second, former winner of the Open. Nice little 10 grand. When you got twins, man, every 10 grand counts. Yeah. Uh, Jay Crouch, the up-and-comer out of Australia, uh, who is, is making a statement uh, from the last year's games on. Dude is just crushing it. He really is. Uh, Luca Vunjak, not even sure who that is, to be honest with you, but yeah. congratulations, Luca. And then we finished with Noah Olson. 72-year-old Noah Olson. <laughs> Retired. Uh, retired and going team still. Maybe he'll pull in Aaron Rodgers. Wins five grand. Pretty awesome. Uh, Corey's asking me to go to number nine. Brandon Luckett. Oh, one of the uh, Southland group. Competitor, yeah. Whatever. We, I, why can't I remember the name of it? Southland competitors. Yeah. 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 Uh, that kind of runs that group that Corey's in, Rudy Berger's in, Shelby Neal. Um, yeah, that's his coach, he says. So congratulations to those five. And then if we go to the women, I was actually shocked um, at number three because came out of nowhere. So Grace Walton wins 15 grand, uh, consistent throughout the open. Uh, had a great Wadapalooza showing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mirjam Von Rohr. A first in the first workout, second in the last. Um, so pretty good there. And Annika Greer with a third place finish. Fantastic. to our friend Annika. And then our friend Ario Ari Lowen uh, takes fourth. And look at Carolyn. Carolyn Prevo. Yeah, girl. Third place finish. So a little behind the scenes, Carolyn texts me yesterday, like at noon. She goes, I got a shot to finish in the top five. So I'm not posting my score because I don't want anybody redoing yeah. to try to beat me. Yeah. And I said, well, that's pretty smart because yep. five grand is five grand. And she said, it's not just five grand. It converts to Canadian money at 65 grand. Oh. Or not grand, 6,500. Yeah. 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 Uh, I gotcha. And, uh, and she goes, I got a shot, but, I, I just need people not to redo. And right. so she was waiting for those eight hours <sighs> as scores are posting to see, is she going to finish in the top five or not? And, uh, and I was waiting with bated breath to see if she got it. And then at like eight ten, I flipped over and saw she did it. She finished fifth, got 5,000 us dollars, oh, wow. 6,500 Canadian dollars. That's so awesome. And so pumped for her. But it's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, are the, the leaderboards finalized? Well, still video review. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but, yeah. Okay. No, no more scores can be submitted. Right, yeah. The only thing that would happen would be if 
her video wasn't accepted for some sure, reason. Sure, sure, sure. sure. But, but I just mean overall, like I wasn't saying, wasn't worried necessarily about her her spot, just saying there could still be some shifts here and there, right? Yeah, most likely the the only, in my opinion, Carolyn's such a good mover. The mo the only thing that's going to happen is her move up. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of it like I was looking at some of our maybe athletes who were like at the 70, at, right at that 25% you know, 75 percentile, oh, yeah. is it possible that, you know, that they won't? So. Yeah. Cause I don't, they're not going to video review down that far. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, don't, I don't even think they're video reviewing past five. Yeah. Right. We are in the open. They're just yep. letting it stand the way it is. So I'm super stoked about this. Um, super stoked for Annika. Um, what a, a good win for her. And, and with what all she's been through in her career, she just needs a win. She does. Just needs a win or two uh, to show that she she can do it. Um, Lex, a little inside in baseball. They asked for all three videos for the top people. Good. I'm glad that they do. So, yeah. So we'll wait. Hopefully, if they're only doing the top five, they'll get a resolution pretty quick, and we'll know that it's that her videos have been verified mm -hmm. in the next day or two. That'd be pretty awesome. So great. So um, let's talk about the surprises. Actually, I know top five, but would assume at least top 10 since it's a lot of money. You know what happens when we assume? Just saying. <laughs> so surprises. Anybody surprise you this year? Uh, with what we were talking about yesterday, yeah. Okay, so you were going to the negative. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, not 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 meaning we're yeah. going negative. I'm just saying. I, I, I was going to talk about those first. Yeah. So yesterday, Lex helped me out. She gave me a heads up, and saw that Tia had posted a score of seven rounds. I know she posted a video today, supposedly, about why. Okay. I have not had a chance to see it yet. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited to go look at it. Um, and then I know then we noticed later in the day that Brooke Wells posted a score not doing any bar muscle ups. Mm -hmm. So I know I have it from a very good um, Lex says her name is actually Scott Sleuth. Yeah, she's good at it too. Um, I have it from a very good source that Brooke Wells suffered a shoulder injury. Yikes. Don't know the severity of it. Don't know. I know there's 30 days between now and quarters for her to recover and feel better. I mean, the natural reaction was the elbow that she <coughs> located at the games a couple years ago. Um, but... Uh, but she actually, I do have from a source that she had a shoulder injury, was just resting it, trying to get better for quarters. What was her tie break time? I don't know. Okay. I know Tia's was three minutes. Yes. Yeah, see, because that's what I find. That's the one that I'm finding so interesting. Here's a couple of things I'm going to add about it. Her tie break time was three minutes. She has a wrist injury. Even with a wrist injury that I get it. Some people are saying, well, maybe it was just the turnover of the muscle ups that that's why she did that. Or strategy wise, make, she maybe didn't need to do that much more. I get that. But it's after still a hundred reps using your wrists, that's still a lot of reps to, to be able to, to have an injured wrist and do that in three minutes. So, and, okay, keep going. And she's injured her wrist by carrying the baby carrier around. Okay. The thing I just find suspicious about that is she's the six time fittest CrossFit athlete. There's a lot of moms out there who walk around who aren't fit, who carry around a baby carrier and stroller and haven't had that kind of wrist problems. 
so I'm just feeling suspicious that it's not really related to that. I think it's related to something else. That's all I'm hearing. So I, I'm not disputing that. Um, I've had a lot of people text me or DM me that the injury is not from the baby carrier or whatever, that it's more than that. Right. But I have no confirmation on that. That yeah. is with people speculating. Yeah, I, I just... What I, I do I, know I, is I got a DM from Carlene Matthews, mm -hmm. um, who, former games athlete, yeah. master's podium winner, um, has a wrist injury very similar to what Tia has, um, according to her. And she said that workout killed her wrist. It was when the weight went up from 65 to 95, mm -hmm. made all the difference in the world. She said her goal was only to do one round of the second part, but she was at Friday Night Lights, mm -hmm. and the crowd pushed her to do more. Okay. Um, and so she said that's really an advantage for someone like Tia, who doesn't isn't in that atmosphere uh, doing the workout. But um, she said that front rack with 95 is about all she could stand. Mm. Okay. Um, and that's just from someone who had a very – she says the same, the same injury. But, okay. But what is the injury though? She Just, did not say. Okay. Yeah. When you're talking to athletes, you get as much as they're willing to give without mm -hmm. getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to call out anybody else. She just said she's going through something very similar. Yeah. And I could be totally wrong. Maybe it totally is from, from that. I, I just would, it just surprises me. That's all. I get it. My babies are 21 and 18. So it's been a while since. We, I, I had this discussion with Lex yesterday. Mm -hmm. She can lift hundreds of pounds. CrossFit is so wrist extensive with barbell and gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Makes you, you know, the emoji. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. To do that in three minutes with a wrist injury is still wicked fast yeah but maybe with 65 pounds she doesn't have to rack it she can just hold it she can use the charlie method i mean but you still have grip i don't know i mean this is still your major joint that you're i mean like to do that to do pull-ups on Okay. Yeah, Holly had the issue, sounds like, from baby-related stuff. Yeah. Um, and it was awful for a while, but uh, obviously I'm not on Tia's level. Uh, Wad Zombie, my wife had it, had to wear a wrist brace for a few months. So, yeah. and But Tia did do two rounds of bar muscle-ups and two rounds of the heavy thruster. Yeah. Brooke only did one round of the thruster and yeah. did not do... Um, did not do any bar muscle-ups. Now, Jamie has a shoulder injury too, and she told me by the last round, it felt like her shoulder was coming out of the socket on the bar muscle-ups. Yeah. And she's nuts, and she redid it and did it twice. So I'll tell you what. I have never – I couldn't tell you the last time I was that sore. I mean, I, I – I'm talking, I felt like I had never done a thruster a day in my life with as the painful as my quads felt. Yeah. I told you guys, I, I went into the gym and that's the workout of the day. Yeah. And I did it with an empty 15 pound barbell and wanted to die, but I am in a very different spot right now. Yeah. And this, this is kind of what I want to say. Like I was a competitive athlete. I'm very competitive. A lot of things like I hate to lose it's really hard for me to see a competitive athlete take the strategy decision to bag an event just to get on to the next round. Mm. It, and I understand men like from a intelligence standpoint, that's probably the way to go for Tia for Tia or Brooke, mm -hmm. if they're nursing an injury and to get better for quarters, which means more, but man, I played, recreational flag football with it like my calf taped up so hard and you know like i would play and maybe that's why i'm 
all banged up and beat up today. But well, how did Brooke Wells finish? What percentile? Uh, she would. She she was fine. Okay. I mean, she fit like that workout. She finished twenty five thousand, but that's even top twenty five. Because there's oh, over 100,000 women, right? Okay, she still finished in the 95th percentile. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's just what I, I... I find it odd that people just don't. But I, I understand it from a strategic standpoint. But, man, when you're as competitive as they are, I find it hard that you just say, yeah, no mas. Yeah. 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 All right. So anybody surprise you on the good side? Um, no real big surprises. I mean. Well, I've been on. I've been on two athletes big time. Yeah. <clears throat> because of how. How they did in workouts that they would normally not do well in. And that is Tudor Magda and Freya Moosebrugger. Those are power out, output athletes that lift a lot of weights and they crushed one and three, which were not power output movements. Um, and I, I was really impressed with both of them on that. And then at the end of the day, Saxon's comeback. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, really happy to see that and really pleasantly surprised. I mean, Car Saunders. Know. Still in the top ten. That's she because she has that, like Kenneth said, that dog in her, right? Yeah. Like, Car is never gonna not. Compete. Yeah, but, I mean, she's had another baby, so. Right. That's, which is awesome. I mean, I'm just saying it's still so impressive. It is. And the last person to actually go toe to toe with T and give her a run. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dallin Pepper top top uh, sixteen. Yeah, he he did well. He did well in event one, which really surprised me. Mm -hmm. Did you see uh, Charlie's girl Amy Kringle eleventh? No. No, look at that. The other person I've been high on is Elena Buds, who had to sit out last year with a knee injury. Uh, she was a semifinal athlete before that. She finished the Open in 14th. Scott Tetlow, 39th. And one and three were so good for the um, smaller lever athletes. Mm -hmm. I was surprised Colton didn't win the last event. Yeah. Yona, Yona beat him. I mean, the owner's a big surprise. Like, yeah, he's always around, but like winning has never been like his thing. Like, he's a top 10 games athlete. He's mm -hmm. like all these things, but man, winning the open was a surprise to me. Yeah. And nice coming out party for Grace Walton. Totally. Another Australian for you to follow. I know. You know, I like those. Yeah, I was thinking before the show, last week you did this with Charlie. Today you're doing it with me. Mm -hmm. We're just going to call it the Amy and a Dude show. <laughs> I mean, but Amy is a dude. <laughs> Next week with Con Porter. I'm in. Actually, I'm going on vacation. Spring break? Yeah. Although, I mean, it is, I am taking, the, we're taking a little trip. Um, just like a three day going to a cabin, going hiking, nowhere far, so. Sometimes those are the best ones. I, that's really, that's all I wanted to do. Like just get a cabin and go hiking and who knows what the weather will be, but that's all right. I'll still do it. Um, so Jeffrey Birchfield uh, says, I wish we could have had a five rep max complex to show strength. See, I think all that's going to come out at quarterfinals. But 75% of the community doesn't get to do it. I agree. I I'm with you. But when you have a three week open, it's 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 tough because then you're you're overloading the strength portion. Yeah, like I just was thinking about like I get, 
I mean, it's only a three week test of fitness, right? But there's like, there's no wall balls. There's, um, I mean, just like, I don't know, no toes to bar. I mean, just other stuff that you're kind of used to seeing in there that we didn't, we didn't get no handstand push-ups. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I know that we have to shorten up the show today because you have to head out, but I got to finish with this question. Okay. Will Amy Radowski get her first ring muscle up in quarterfinals? Mm. When is quarterfinals? 30 days. Oh, okay. Well, let's make that my goal. <clears throat> it would be so cool to announce on this show. It would, wouldn't it? That Amy Rudowski got her first I'm ring muscle you, up. You guys, like the video that I'm going to make when this happens. It's going to be, I, I mean, I'm going to need three days of three hours of reels just to make with all the footage I have. But I, I like that goal. Okay. I'll, I'm going to Six text camera angles. We'll put a GoPro on your head. Yep. It's <laughs> <laughs> April 17th, they release. Is that when the workouts are? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I got to perform a wedding on the 27th. Well, you'll get to do it on a high because you'll have gotten your first bar yeah. muscle up or ring muscle up. Or I'll be like in a sling because, <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't. <sighs> um, that's also Corey, Corey's birthday. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Birchfield says dubs and pull-ups are my focus for the next year. Let's do it, Jeff. You and me both, buddy. And Holly is encouraging you. Thank you. I can't wait. I'm going to text my coach and tell him we got 30 days. Yeah. So last year, like, they, so they've said that quarterfinals are going to be more approachable this year, where at least you'll be able to start them all. Yeah. And that give you more confidence going into this year. Because I know last year, like, it's some of the events started off tough. Mm -hmm. And people just had to post a zero. I was able to post something for every score, but the like wall facing handstand pushups were just a different thing. Um, yeah. But I, I always feel less stress for the quarterfinals because my goal typically, you know, I know we talked this year that, that my focus this year was different. Um, but if I did make it, then, you know, I will, I'll continue. But um, I don't even remember what I was saying. My focus. Yeah. I, yeah. Because your goal's already been achieved. You're oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm less nervous for quarterfinals. Yeah, because I'm, yeah, that's all I was going for. Yeah. So in Masters, top 200 go, you don't think you can get top 200? I don't. Okay. But we'll, we'll see. If Maybe if I get them ring muscle-ups. Corey says, Amy, if my uncoordinated ass can get ring muscle-ups, you surely can. I guess I'm going to stop thinking about it because okay. then I'll do better. So, Corey... And this is my editorial comment. Amy can get a bar, a ring muscle up. She can. She has every ability to do it. Just has not happened yet. She just has the confidence, has to get the confidence in her own ability to trust herself to throw her body forward at the top. I need to undulate my hips forward. That's it. Yeah. She has all the aspects of it. Mm -hmm. She has a good pull. She has a good dip. Kip. She has all that stuff. She just needs the confidence. To mm -hmm. throw her head through at the top so that she can get in that position. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. Thanks, everybody. I seriously, you, you guys are the, goes, the body will follow. And Lana Marcin, let's go, Amy. You can do it. Okay, there will be a whole episode focused <laughs> on this. If it happens, I'll go through all of my 10 years steps of how to get one. Yeah, this. Yeah, the ten year the ten year journey mm -hmm. for one ring muscle up. Yep, <laughs> one woman's journey. <laughs> A one woman show. Now and then I'll Broadway. retire from CrossFit. <laughs> Remember how I was like, if I can get under, if I can get under a four hour marathon, I will retire from running marathons, and I haven't run one since. So, 
let's see. There you go. I'm just kidding. I won't retire from CrossFit. I know. Just I need to go see ready. another red shirt. I'll call up Julie. You've gotten help from Justin Kotler. I know. You've get, like, you've <laughs> I like, feel like if coaching. were to see me in, in like the flesh, like coach me in the flesh, I think it would be done by now. So the Pancheck brothers, I know that was a very long time ago. Well, it's been a 10 year journey. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pay tribute to all of them. <laughs> all all right. right. Well, I'm going to have to log out of here. Yeah. Well, with that, we'll let everybody out of here. We'll catch everybody next week on the Clydesdale Media Roundtable. Bye, guys.